Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion setting forth his sovereignty and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. to leave 1 Corinthians 13, but uh, Brother Willie, we're getting closer to chapter 15, and uh, pray for us. I'm going to try, I feel that I would like to try to teach you uh, 14th chapter, at least read this chapter and talk about some of the things in it, 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And... Uh, this 13th chapter is so beautiful and the insertion of it between 12 and 14 it's with reluctance that we leave it but in order to get to uh, the most of uh, the 14th chapter I want to read the last verse of chapter 12 the 31st verse of chapter 12 but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way now by the way this word covet here uh, it it's not contradictory to where the scripture says thou shalt not covet uh, as this word is taken from the original it also means desire and uh, and the word earnestly, uh, it's showing uh, that Paul would have them to seek, to seek the best gifts or that which God would be most pleased with. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And I certainly think that he was talking about what he said in the 13th chapter, that he showed them that everything be done in love. And... Uh, the Spirit enabled him to so beautifully portray that. And then at the beginning of the 14th chapter, we notice that he's still teaching the same principle, follow after charity or follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. You see how in harmony that is with, with, the, uh, with the 31st verse, uh, that desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy now this word prophesy it means more than one thing it it means to foretell it means to divine it means to speak by inspiration and I I think as it is certainly used uh, its context shows that it is that it is to preach or to teach as well but certainly it means to foretell it to speak by inspiration and it, this is used, this word is used several times in this chapter. And notice uh, the second verse. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God, but no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, he does not have reference, and as you will, you will certainly see uh, as, the ch as we go on in the chapter, that uh, that as the word tongue is used in this book, he's talking about languages. He, he is not talking about uh, uh, something that no one understands because a tongue is synonymous with language as it is used in this chapter. And you'll notice in your Bibles the word unknown is in italics and it's added by the translator. Uh, that was unknown, uh, one speaking in a language that was unknown to people around uh, him would not be profitable. Now, I want, as this church had the gift of tongues, that is, they understood there were different, there were people in the church that could speak many tongues, many different languages, I want to show you the, the advantage of this. Because there was in this Gentile church, there were Jews, and, and we're talking about this great city of Corinth, uh, where 
uh, there were so many different cultures and so many uh, different nationalities there. There were Jews and Gentiles, and uh, it, there's no telling how many different languages there were in this city and how important, as God had said in his word, as he said to Paul, uh, I have much people in this city, and there, these were a many, uh, these spoke many different languages, and how important that they understood the glorious gospel of the Son of God. So you may see how important it was that uh, Paul had the gift of understanding many languages, and so did uh, did many others in the church. And uh, how wonderful uh, the Lord is in giving of this ability to understand different languages. But uh, he showed, uh, he, we will see further, that when someone spoke in a language different to those that were his hearers, it was forbidden without an interpreter. He had to have someone to interpret what he said because he would, if, if so, though he sp spoke real well, he would only speak to God, and he would forbid, forbid this. But that, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. I want to say a word about this, uh, this word edification. <clears throat> I, I used to uh, work uh, as a carpenter. Uh, I didn't class myself as a, uh, as a full-fledged carpenter, but I knew how to do a little carpentry work, and I did help to build houses. And uh, it, would be, uh, it would be correct uh, for me to, uh, to, uh, to supply, instead of the word advocation here, uh, to building because this word is derived, it has its root from the word oedipus, uh, and, uh, and as we think uh, of a carpenter, he is a builder. Well, uh, Paul, was a he was a spiritual builder, and he's talking about the house of God, and he's talking about building up the house of faith. So, as a carpenter would take material uh, and build uh, a house, uh, or as we think uh, in architecture uh, of the building that is framed, the edifice that is produced. Uh, and here uh, he speaks to men, to edification, to the building up of those people as they are taught by the Spirit and as they are taught. Uh, here is edification and exhortation. Uh, the word exhortation literally, uh, as it's taken from the original, it, it, leader, it literally means to call or to invite, to come near, to entreat, uh, and to teach and to comfort. So uh, to prophesy, you can see uh, what, uh, what, is, what comes out of prophesying. Well, there's edification, there's building up of the house of God. There is teaching the things of God, and there is the exhortation, there is the entreaty, uh, whether it be uh, to, uh, to love or to good works uh, or uh, to study God's word or to prayer. There's the entreaty, there's the teaching of the house of God. There's building up of uh, the household uh, of faith and to comfort, of course. Uh, it, there is comfort to... Uh, we, you know, that's one of the Im glorious imports of the gospel, to comfort to the Lord's people, to comfort them in their loneliness, in their downcast state, uh, in uh, their frail condition, and in their helplessness, to build them up by the glorious uh, God of heaven who uh, is the God of comfort that comforts us in all of our tribulations and in our sorrows, in our difficulty. He... The fourth verse, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. You see, here's that word again, that word edifies. Uh, the, uh, building, building of the hearers, building up uh, the house of God with the gospel and with the teaching of the Spirit and the understanding that is given. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Now, Paul uh, would not have that, but he that prophesies edifies the church. So we're talking about building. I would that you all spake with tongues. In other words, 
I would that you all understood many different languages, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. You see how many times uh, he employs that word, uh, edifying, building up the church. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And Paul did all of this, if you please. He spoke uh, by uh, revelation. Uh, he spoke by the knowledge that God had given him. He spoke uh, or by prophesying uh, by doctrine, which is teaching uh, as he taught uh, of that church. You see... Uh, how he was instructing them and the importance. Now, this chapter deals with how to carry on the worship of God, that it be done in an order, orderly manner and according to the direction of God and according to the Spirit. He would not have them in, in confusion, but he would have the, God's house, a house of order uh, and uh, for instruction. Uh, he would have solemnity uh, in uh, this house. Even things, now he, he goes on still talking about tongues, languages, and even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Well, if the blowing of the trumpet uh, and certain notes and certain sounds uh, it is to prepare to the battle, unless there is a, dis this is distinct, uh, unless it is easily understood, who's going to prepare uh, for the battle? Uh, and uh, if you can't tell whether uh, it's to the battle or to retreat, uh, who's going to know what to do? Uh, uh, so uh, he's telling uh, them uh, that uh, he would have them to understand what comes from the pulpit. What is said there, he wants the church to know what is said. He wants them uh, to understand. He wants them to be edified. He wants them to be exhorted uh, as uh, these things are spoken. So likewise, ye accept, ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken for ye speak into the air? Wouldn't this forever uh, put away uh, that, that idea uh, of, uh, of a rattling in the throat that no one uh, understood? Uh, that is, words were not spoken uh, and uh, that no one, uh, every, if anyone uh, expressed it or attempted to, they would have to guess. So, uh, he speaks of distinct uh, and easy to be understood words in the church of the living God. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. None of them, he says. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian and and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Uh, I, have, I have looked uh, at words uh, that were not in our language, and the pronunciation is given of these words in my language or in our letters and with our pronunciation. And uh, I, I just admit to, uh, that there's some of those words in other languages, uh, I, just, I just cannot say them. I, I, I make the, the terriblest uh, a mess of, of trying to say those words in another language because my tongue uh, and uh, I, I just do not have the ability at being uh, so uh, in just speaking uh, our language and not familiar with these things you we as we think especially the japanese or the chinese a language uh those that that is that would be so difficult for me to begin to speak 
uh, these things, even though uh, I had it written out uh, in letters and set off uh, so that I should be able to pronounce it, I would still have difficulty. But there were those that had the gift that they could uh, express to those people the glorious gospel of the Son of God. Even so much, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. And now this word excel, uh, he's not talking about, he's not exciting them to be, to do it better than anyone else. But this, uh, this word uh, expresses uh, to abound, uh, to uh, to have a great amount of the desire uh, to, uh, to possess a spiritual gift to the edifying of the church and that, that they might grow in these things and use the glorious things that God has given. I've, I've thought a great deal about the economy of God, uh, how, how wonderful His economy is. He knows who to give the gifts to. He knows uh, who uh, he would have to be rich or who he would have to be poor. He knows how to balance uh, everything. Uh, and it was just remarked to me today uh, as uh, people keep uh, fooling them uh, with, uh, with the things that belong to God. And uh, he has put a balance uh, in uh, this uh, great creation. Uh, and uh, to take away what he has placed here uh, in the insect life um, uh, or in the animal life uh, uh, to remove these things uh, and uh, to, uh, 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 to bring all of the things that are foreign uh, materials to the streams and to the ocean uh, and uh, to pollute uh, the air and the water uh, oh, the, the great balance of God, how he has balanced it, the magnificence, the glory of God, and to give the various gifts uh, uh, to the church and to place them in the church uh, to the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh, how wonderful uh, and how perfect and how glorious uh, he is. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. By in so doing, someone else could hear the word of God and understand this blessed import of the gospel. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. Isn't that a beautiful verse? I will pray with the Spirit. We can't pray without the Spirit. We can't pray without an intercessor. And, oh, uh, how often I feel that the Lord indicts us, gives us the spirit of prayer, uh, gives us the spirit of supplication. I will pray with the understanding also. How blessed it is that when we pray, uh, I think about uh, people talking to dumb idols and, and praying to gods that are no gods. And we, as we pray, we know that we have a perfect intercessor, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, interceding for us, hearing our prayers, uh, understanding our thoughts, and knowing all about us, comprehending our every need, and able to supply and to give us all the things uh, that we stand in need of, praying with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and you sing with the Spirit this evening, or you did to me, and I will sing with the understanding also. We need uh, songs of truth as well uh, as the truth as we preach the gospel. We need uh, songs with a message in them that are in harmony with the gospel and in harmony with truth and make melody in our hearts to the Lord. You see, he's setting up 
an orderly way and manner of worship there. There was confusion there. Uh, there were people speaking uh, at the same time. Uh, there was disorder, and he was setting it straight, if you please. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified or built up. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all, yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding and that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. What would it, what, how great, what wonderful knowledge, what wonderful revelation uh, how great the Apostle Paul was in understanding, uh, but uh, he said 10,000 words uh, that he spoke, if it was in an unknown tongue, would be only to God and not to the church, and they would not be edified. And I'd rather speak five words. It's better for me. I'd rather speak five words. Uh, yet in the church I'd rather speak five words with my understanding than that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Isn't it wonderful that we have divine inspiration? Now, don't, mi don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying uh, that, that we have the original manuscripts. Uh, I'm saying uh, that our book uh, is translated into our language uh, from the Greek tongue, and we have it. And what if it, uh, what if it was written in Greek? Uh, what would it mean to me as an individual? I would have to go to school, and I would have to try to understand that language. Uh, and, uh, oh, uh, even though uh, I have looked, uh, in the Greek lexicon many times uh, what, uh, how difficult it would be for me to glean from the scriptures if I only had the Greek language. Or if, uh, if the one that preached spoke in Latin or in Greek, uh, what, how would I be edified? It would be an unknown tongue. Uh, I, I know uh, that uh, one of the largest uh, uh, so-called churches. I know uh, that uh, the priest for uh, some time, uh, for many years, spoke only in Latin as he spoke to the people. Uh, we, uh, I understand that has changed somewhat, but uh, uh, let's, let's just say that you come to church here and the minister got up and uh, he preached to you in a language that you've never heard of. Of what prophet would it be? No prophet at all. Oh, uh, there might be some glory in it that this, this man uh, had uh, uh, such knowledge, but you wouldn't be edified unless someone interpreted the message, and Paul forbid it. Brethren, be not children in understanding, how be it in malice, be ye children. Anger, disagreements, be children, leave those things behind, but in understanding, be men. And the marginal reads perfect, which, uh, and Paul is saying, uh, be grown up, be mature, in understanding, be mature, be men, uh, be perfect. And the word perfect here means uh, mature or finished uh, as it applies to men. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. When our Lord and Master taught 
and we have it in Matthew 15 um, I believe it is in Matthew 15 where that our Lord and Master declared that this people's heart had waxed fat and that they though they heard the words that he spoke and though they understood the language that he said but still they could not uh, receive the message they could not understand that I want to turn to that and read as my memory isn't functioning It was, it's Matthew 13 and 15. I had the 15 mixed up. Matthew 13 and 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross or gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts, and I should be converted, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Uh, in that 14th verse, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. They beheld the Son of God. They heard what he said, but they didn't understand it. They wouldn't receive it. Here uh, he is telling them uh, in this 21st verse, that with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. They wouldn't hear the Apostle Peter. They wouldn't hear the Lord Jesus Christ. They wouldn't hear the Apostle Paul. Uh, and uh, so, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but to them that believe. If therefore the whole church be come together unto one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you're mad? Well, if they all uh, spoke in a different language and no one understood what was said, if uh, someone came in, an unbeliever would come in, these people are mad. Uh, they are crazy. They don't know what's going on. Uh, they would be saying. But if all prophesy, there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Let's just say in our minds, I uh, hear... Uh, here the, the church at Corinth is gathered together uh, and uh, I know that Paul was writing this to them but let us he did come to Corinth and let's say that he was there uh, and he was preaching and someone came in uh, and uh, they, uh, they didn't understand uh, the native tongue uh, they had a different dialect uh, and Paul spoke uh, to that individual in, in words that he could understand and he was convinced and convicted uh, and, the, and he heard the gospel with power uh, and he felt the import of it. He could appropriate it to himself. Uh, and uh, the Spirit witnessed in him that this was the message of truth. Uh, we know that uh, such things uh, as that happened. Uh, and uh, the, the, the blessedness of the growth of the church as God gave uh, the apostle uh, how perfect God was as we read to you that Paul spoke in more languages than they all. And here uh, we have this infiltration of the different uh, nationalities of people, Jew and Greek and Gentile, uh, as they met together there and were edified by the teaching 
of the, those that had the gift to understand many languages, and especially Paul. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, every one a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. Now, this is a peculiar verse to me. Uh, most interpreters uh, seem uh, to, uh, to use this in a good sense. Uh, that uh, when they come together, as they had many gifts, one of them hath a psalm, uh, a song to sing that would edify the church uh, and uh, would teach. Uh, and one that could teach, one could understand different languages. Uh, another could interpret. One spoke by revelation. And then he said, let all things be done unto edifying. I wonder if he, if he isn't saying to them, I wonder if this is not a rebuke uh, because uh, one was wanting to sing, one was wanting to preach, and one was wanting to interpret, uh, and uh, they were speaking at the same time and there wasn't order. Uh, this occurred to me. I'm not sure. Uh, I just insert that thought to, to you. Uh, he, he is examining them. How is it then, brethren? How is it? God's house is not the place of confusion, but it's the place of order. It's the place of edification. All right. If we sing, everyone sings. If we pray, there is one that prays, and we all try to pray uh, with him. What if, what if in the church when we had prayer, uh, everyone was speaking uh, as loud as the other, and we were all praying to God, and uh, you would hear voices all over the church, and it would take a lot of concentration, would it not, to, uh, if uh, we even concentrated on what we were thinking in our prayer. So uh, when, we, uh, when we pray, uh, when we teach, it's important that it be done in an orderly manner and for the edification of the church. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, and I will show you by what follows that this, this, he, he doesn't mean that they're to speak both at the same time, but one after the other. Uh, and he said, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, are at most by three, and that by course, notice, and that by course, and let one interpret. In other words, if the church didn't understand everything that he said, if he didn't speak in their language, then someone else would tell them what the man said uh, in the church of the living God. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. That's plain, isn't it? That needs no interpretation. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. And if, if anything be revealed to another that setteth by, let the first hold his peace. Well, let's say uh, that uh, someone is up here preaching and, and someone, uh, oh, they just get the best idea and they raise up and uh, I want to talk a while. I, I want to tell you what the Lord just showed me. Well, Paul wouldn't, uh, that, that isn't the way. You'll have to wait um, um, until this man finishes. Uh, he hasn't finished his message yet. Uh, so uh, he said, uh, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and I, I, uh, I understand his meaning to be, ye may all prophesy if you have the gift of prophesy. He wasn't saying that everyone in the church, uh, each and every member of the church could all prophesy. It's confined to those that have the gift, and I believe the context will show that that is certainly true. <clears throat> for, for he says the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. I think, I feel certainly that as a minister of the gospel, I should certainly enjoy uh, and desire to hear 
other men preach the gospel. Uh, that is a wonderful privilege to me, uh, uh, to hear other men preach the gospel. And each and every one of us, all of us, uh, uh, our discourses and our language and our teachings must be in harmony with the Word of God. That's our authority. We're subject to, uh, to the Word of God and, and our teaching uh, and our instruction is in the realm that is found in the Word of God. That's our authority. Uh, and if we speak not according to this Word, there's no light in us. Uh, our light has to come from the Spirit and from the Word of God. And the Spirit's not going to reveal to me, if it's the Spirit of God, anything contrary to this written word. So uh, he says the spirits of the the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, not the author of confusion. Yes, I find in writing, and I have witnessed confusion in the church but that's because of the lack of instruction that's because individuals got in the flesh that's because uh, that uh, there was the need of instruction and the following after the spirit of the living God and God is not the author of anything wrong that takes place in our lives or in the church but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. I know because of this text that Paul is stamped as an old bachelor and a woman hater. That's the stamp the world places on him, and uh, he, this didn't come from his cranium. It came, it, he spoke by the Spirit of God. He said, as thus saith the law, uh, and it was for uh, the benefit of the church. He, it was his authority, and I would like for you uh, to turn with me to 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 11th and 12th verse. And we'll read something else as Paul wrote to the young minister. I'll read beginning with the 11th verse of the 2nd chapter of 1 Timothy. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if she continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. Now, uh, I, I fully believe that uh, Paul was speaking about in the congregation as we are seated today uh, that uh, he isn't saying that the women can't sing he isn't saying uh, he, he isn't saying to me uh, that in our business meetings uh, that a woman if called upon uh, cannot express herself or cannot uh, uh, make her voice unknown uh, or have an opinion respecting uh, matters that uh, are in the church of the living God when it comes to the business or the decisions or uh, our different meetings uh, in our business meeting. Now, some may disagree with me, but uh, as I have pastored uh, a number of churches, uh, I, I, had, I had the privilege uh, of uh, there were sisters in the church that was clerk of the church and uh, they they did that job very well. They read the minutes of the meeting, uh, and uh, they they did a wonderful job. 
uh, in the church. But Paul is forbidding a women to teach in the church or to use their authority over the man. I know uh, I've heard this. Uh, maybe it does exist. I don't know. But I've heard this and you've heard it. To, uh, well, over at that church, well, that woman runs that church. I've heard things like that. Uh, or uh, this uh, woman's husband does uh, what she tells him to. You, you've heard things like that. Uh, but, and, I, and I assure you, I'm, I'm not putting down uh, women. I'm elevating them. And uh, the place where God has uh, placed them uh, and, uh, oh, uh, we, we see uh, their beautiful place in the church. And where would our churches, churches be if it were not for them? Uh, what would we have in the church? Uh, if we did not have the precious sisters uh, uh, in the church, uh, the precious widows in the church that give their lives and give their mites uh, uh, and give uh, for service in the church of the living God. He says they should be in obedience as thus saith the law, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for them to speak in the church. Uh, and uh, I understand that he has teaching under consideration. If you do not agree with me, well, uh, we might talk about it another time. But what came the word of God out from you, or it came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. That's a peculiar verse, isn't it? Let's read that part again. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. I see in this possibly there were individuals that felt like they knew uh, what uh, should be done, and they knew what should be said, and they felt that they had authority above the Apostle Paul, but uh, he uh, declared uh, his authority, he declared that he spoke by inspiration, and that he had authority over them, and, go and God had given this authority uh, to him, uh, and if uh, individuals didn't think that he spoke by the Spirit of God, he said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. And here's that word again, covet. Uh, and I say again, it, it is not a contradiction. It is because, because the law says thou shalt not covet. Uh, as I told you in the beginning, it also means desire, uh, an overflowing, uh, an abounding a desire, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. That's a wonderful, instructive 40 verses in God's Word. Uh, how how that individuals can get uh, out of out of these words a a way and manner of conduct or how to carry on services when this seems so clear in his precious book and as you think about this chapter bear in mind the things that that you have read before and the things that we have talked about in this church all of the difficulties that there were and all of the different people and how young they were many of them were just babes in Christ uh, many of them lacked instruction they were carnal uh, the the old man the old nature uh, was stronger in them than the spirit of the living God and how necessary uh, you remember when we talked to you about the communion in the church, uh, Paul uh, even had 
cases of drunkenness in the church, uh, in the communion service, and selfishness, and overeating, some uh, overeating, and others going hungry, the poor going hungry in the church, and not only that, disorder in the service. And he was setting things right uh, as he taught them the solemnity of the, the service of God. Let all things be done decently and in order. I hope that uh, this way and manner of instruction is a benefit to the church. I felt impressed to take this a verse by verse and let us read it together and talk about it uh, some to you. Uh, I, uh, it, I know when I do this on an individual uh, basis, that is, when I take a chapter verse by verse and study it uh, myself and, and try to study each sentence and each word and each verse, it's profitable to, for me, I thought it might be profitable uh, for you that we take a verse by verse reading of this chapter this evening. Now, uh, may the Lord bless this to you. If you're here and desire to unite with the church, we invite you to come. Uh, and take a cross, receive members, however we have authority to receive members, we invite you to come. We'll stand and sing. You have a number. Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.